Hi guys, Alex here, and in today's tutorial we're going to be talking about camera movement and shot types. So let's get into it. Camera movement means the way a camera shifts or moves to visually narrate and shape the viewer's perspective of a scene. It's how we see the film. Camera movement can direct our attention to certain things, or in some cases conceal information from us, or build tension. It's important because it can be used to tell the story, express emotion, and suggest the subjective perspective of a character. The camera movement and what we see in the frame, mixed in with the audio, is basically how we are told a story. Camera movement should have meaning. Everything you do is saying something, and that's why it's important to have a reason behind why you're moving the camera or using a certain shot type, not just, I think it looks cool. It should have a specific purpose behind it. There are so many camera movements and shot types to choose from, so let's go through some together. With the exception of a couple of shots from my GoPro and two from my DSLR, everything else has been captured using my phone. The first is static. A static shot is a still shot, meaning it doesn't move, it's locked off. Usually this is done on a tripod. The shot that you're currently seeing is also known as an establishing shot or an extreme long shot. It's a super wide shot used to show as much as possible in one frame, commonly used in opening shots, landscape shots, or anything where there is a lot happening in the frame. Wes Anderson is famous for his static shots where we see a large picturesque background followed by a character running across the frame. A static establishing shot is most common, but you could also do this this handheld or even stabilized with a gimbal. Next up we have a long shot or a full shot, as in a full body shot covering the head to toe of the subject. This can be really good for showing off the full entirety of a character, or as you can see in this example here, perhaps we need to show some of the background because that's integral to the story and you can capture all of that in a long or full shot. Now a little bit tighter we have a medium shot, and a medium shot of a subject is usually from their waist to the top of their head, or it can be slightly tighter and be from the bottom of their chest to the top of their head. Here we have a close up, which is a shot of a character's head. This can often add intensity or emotion to a scene because we're seeing a character's reactions and that is the main focus of the shot. This is an extreme close-up and it's generally used to allow the viewer to enter the character's personal space. The frame is so tight that it's actually cutting off portions of my head in this shot. It gives the viewer no choice but to experience the character's feelings alongside them. This is what's known as a down shot and it's taken from above the eye level of the subject in the frame. It can be used to make someone feel weaker and more vulnerable. This is the opposite and it's known as an upshot and it's taken from below the eye level of the subject. It can be used to make a character feel more intimidating and dominating. This is what's known as an over the shoulder shot, also known as a dirty shot and it's most commonly used in scenes where two people are speaking or to create a separation in foreground and background. Here we have a two shot, which is a shot of two people at the same time. This is called a pan, and it's a shot where the camera pans from left to right, or from right to left, and it can be useful to reveal a scene, a character, or a subject. In this shot, I'm using it to reveal this church. Here we have a zoom, and it can be useful in drawing attention to certain things within the frame, but if you do it too much on a mobile phone, it becomes digital, grainy, and less cinematic. However, maybe you're going for an 80s promo fill, and you can create a shot like this and use that effect to your advantage. Here we have a tilt, and that's when the camera tilts either up or down. A tilt can imply meaning to certain shots or aspects of a character, or it can draw our attention to certain things within the frame. In this shot, the use of a tilt is making the church appear a lot more grand and imposing. This shot is called a dolly shot, and it's used by putting the camera on some sort of wheel device or car and moving it horizontally forwards or backwards. This could be used to draw our attention to a subject, or you could use it to emphasize the ending of a scene or of a line that's delivered. This shot is called a truck or a sliding shot and it's done by moving the camera from side to side. You could use wheels, a track, or in this case, a motorized slider. It's most commonly used to reveal something in a shot. This is called a pedestal shot and it's when the camera moves on a vertical axis. So in here, I'm going from my toes to my head. This could be an interesting way of introducing a character. This is called a focus rack, and it's when you pull focus from two different points within the frame. As you can see here, I'm going from my face to the building in the background. You could use this to draw the audience's attention to different parts of the frame at certain times. Here we have one of my favorites, which is handheld. Handheld meaning obviously held in your hands as opposed to being put on a tripod. Handheld can feel more intimate. It can elevate emotion and intensity and during high drama or dramatic scenes and give a sense of urgency and pace. I also feel that it kind of breathes with the action. It's almost as if we're thrust in there with the actors. 
This is an example of random movement. See how it adds a little bit more intensity and drama to the situation and draws our attention to certain aspects within the frame. This is called a tracking shot and it's a shot that follows alongside a subject throughout a scene, keeping them in the frame. This is called a POV shot or point of view shot and it's used to show what the character is seeing. This is called a push-in shot, and it's sometimes called the character dolly. It's used to build tension. Here we have the pull-out, and it's used to sometimes reveal a location or scenario, or make a character feel slightly smaller. This is called an arc shot, and an arc shot is when the camera moves a full or semi-circle around a subject or a character, keeping that subject or character in the center frame. It can be used to reveal different components of an area in which the subject is standing. Here we have a boom shot, and that's when the camera moves vertically. It's usually achieved by using a crane, a jib, or some sort of counterweight system, and the shots are usually very smooth. To create this shot, I used a massive pole that I attached the GoPro onto the end of, and then I raised it up slowly and steadily. This is known as a dolly zoom, or a Hitchcock shot, and it's used to create a sense of unease. To create this shot, you'll need to move closer into your subject while simultaneously zooming out. This is called a canted shot, or a Dutch angle, and it's used to give a sense of unease and disorientation, you simply tilt the camera on its side slightly so it's off center. And finally, we have roll, which is when the camera rolls or spins on its side axis. And obviously this could be used to create a sense of disorientation and unease, or it could be used as a transitional shot or a stylistic feature that you want to include in your film. So those are just a few examples. Now you should have an arsenal of camera movements and shot types to choose from and use in your film. Remember, it's always better to be prepared and to plan stuff beforehand, that way you'll save time on set and you'll have intentions behind your camera shots. So make a shot list, use a storyboard, and pre-plan what you're going to do before you get there. And if for whatever reason you can't and you're just showing up and shooting, then before pressing record, take your time and think about what it is you want to capture and try to compose an image. It's better to have a few really good shots than tons of, you know, poor quality footage at the end. That's it for today, guys. Stay creative and join me next time for editing on your phone. Thank you.